Disclaimer. This video is part of a playthrough of the game Hello Charlotte Heaven's Gate. Because the game doesn't have audio, all the sound effects, BGMs, ambient sounds and so on are from different sources. All the original sources of each audio effect is linked in the description. I wake up with a headache and stumble into the bedroom to brush my teeth. I look into the mirror and notice that I only blink with one eye. Weird. But whatever. School proceeds as normal until I start feeling extremely fatigued during the fifth period. Something's not right. I end up calling mom. She always knows what to do. It seems like your son has bell Bell's palsy. It might take around a month to recover. Great. Out of all the rare illnesses, my body decided to get this one. What the fish is that? I didn't think me. Could you please pull up the, a, a little summary of that? Ah, uh -huh. I still don't know what it does. <laughs> because I'm not the time drawer, you know. <laughs> I know. And, um, fish you. As always, me, because you're making... Me edit hell, uh, heaven's gate harder. You know that. Definitely. I mean, you get a note with the audio, but yeah. The other we're just taking too long. Did someone just come in? Oh. Keep quiet, and no one will get her. <coughs> you bitch, stop screaming. Even though you're emotionally dead, unless you're medicated, it's going to hurt like hell. Can't laugh at all about that. If it's a smile, I can always give you one, see? I mean, Bennett is cute somehow. I don't know why, but Bennett is... He's it's, it's, it's somehow a good boy. The only thing I don't like is about this, that he's a soap addict. Love. We're storming in the park after school again. The weather isn't particularly good, but I have an umbrella with me. Vincent doesn't mind the rain, but I do, so I follow him like the butler of a rich household. His throat is bandaged. Vincent doesn't bring it up, and I don't ask. We stop at a small bridge. Oh, there's something I've been meaning to tell you for a while. No way, is it a love confession, Mr. Fennel? Almost. I've been writing a novel. Oh, what's it called? Ether Almanac. Sounds fancy. I'm still in the process of writing it, and frankly, there's a lot to do, but I have published some chapters already. You're willing to give it a read? I'll be happy to share it. Of course, I mean, you can't write badly. <laughs> Thank you for your trust. It's a collection of short stories centered around one divine being. It needs a lot of improvement and I don't expect my target demographic to be older than myself. Still, it's a, it's a work I love dearly. It's the first time I've heard him use love in regard to something. I should read it soon, I thought. I had ended up postponing it until the very last minute. One's writing is the mirror of one's soul. I was afraid of my imaginary construct of Vincent's shattering upon looking into it. Ever Almanac. The land of eternity, there lived a scientist. Exiled from her homeland, for heresy against their beliefs, she decided to travel around the world to see all its wonders. She saw civilizations rise and fall. Stars explode and new forms of life come into the existence. After thousands of years of wandering, she began to grow weak in her limbs. She walked and walked until she stumbled and fell down to the ground. There she lay for days, unable to get up on her own. People passed by. Some asked if she was feeling unwell. Some pitied her and gave her food to eat. Some gave advice on how to get back onto her feet, but nobody extended a hand. One day she felt someone lift up her weakened frame. She looked up and saw a being she couldn't quite describe as its form was constantly changing. 
It was the most fascinating sight she'd ever seen. What are you? the scientist asks. I cannot be defined by mere words, it laughed, amused by her question. Don't call me White Queen, but that was only one of my many masks. I am neither a man or woman, for I am not human. They say meeting me is a great blessing that happens once in many millions of years. Therefore, how about I grant you one wish? The being offered, say, what do you wish for? Scientist thought of unlimited knowledge and the world's treasures of infallible health. But none of those wonders interested her in any longer. <clears throat> Can you remain by my side? She asked, her voice growing weak as the realization that she grew tired of solitude dawned at her. Unfortunately, I cannot grant you that wish, as nothing can bind me, was the divine being's answer, and the scientist hung her head low. However, if it's a lifelong pattern you want, partner you want, without as much as a one, the creature tore off the scientist's finger, and her identical copy grew on from it. As the scientist screamed from the sharp pain that pierced her, the relentless god spoke again. He knows everything you do and understands you better than anyone ever would. He'll never leave your side and remain with you in life and death. When your sight fades, it'll become your eyes. When you lose strength in your legs, it'll carry you in its embrace. Together, you're one. I dream of falling into a pit of identical corpses. I wake up in a cold sweat. I'm just idly browsing a phone as I struggled to finish a mission in a shoot I was playing. All finals, sure, popular. Nice! I just looked up his novel and it has like 15 fan communities. Holy fish. Oh, what are you acting all surprised for? Aren't you his fan or something? Stop it, I'm not a blind follower. I read his writing the other day. It's good, like really good, but I didn't like it. Whoa, okay. Care to explain? Well, the overarching theme of his stories is that only you can save yourself. It's like other people don't exist or can't be of any help even if they're around. Characters either choose solitude or end up in circumstances where they're surrounded by their own selves. Don't you think it's close-minded to think that way? Oh, I don't know. I knew you were dense as a brick, but not to this extent. What do you mean? And he rubs her temples and gives me a, a reprimanding stare. Uh, listen. Doesn't all of this remind you of a certain someone? Breaking. Young people aged 12 to 16 found dead on the shore. The motives behind their deaths remain unclear. Numerous sources report that they all were frequent visitors of Heaven's Gate community website. A web called Bruce Belize may have let them to end themselves. Ah, huh? Vincent skipped school for three weeks. When I see him again, there's a mask plastered on his face. Vincent Fennell is smiling. Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> I wonder what this is. It's dark in the morgue. We sit on the cold ceramic floor. I feel like Sonica doesn't have long left to live. How are you feeling, Mr. Hanukkah? Tired, but that's nothing new. Is everyone pulling an all nighter because of me? Yeah, even Florence didn't hold back on soap. Felix sighs. Even though I did nothing to deserve this kind of treatment, you all chose to act stupid. What are you sunken for, idiot? You'll see me tomorrow. That person won't be you. I doubt anybody will notice the difference. It's not like I did anything remarkable during my last span. You gave a crap about me. Although, you gave a crap about everyone. Just like Henry. Before he fell ill. It's unfair. We both know I'm a copy. 
First, Mr. Hanukkah tells me it's okay to care, then the, he complains when I do. Which is it? Do you believe in God, Bennett? No. Henry Huxley isn't someone as shallow as that. I see. Then it must be the same for me too. Mr. Hanukkah, I won't make friends with you the next time we meet. It's a promise then. Exams. The favorite thing to talk is say as somebody doing so. Exams are stressful, but they are nothing I'm unprepared for. After all, I've always been a diligent student. I got paired with Henry during the language exam, exam and we passed with flying colors. Winston, however, remains as distant as ever. For the past month, we haven't gotten to talk to you at all. I wonder what he's thinking. How disappointing. I can't seem to find any topics to discuss with you, Isla. No, no, Winston's not that pretty. The very fact that you thought of me like that makes you the pretty one. Why do you look like her? I will not say the name, but you look like her. Truth is yours, imaginary Mr. Fennel. I understood that the way I use words impacts people around me, so I decided to distance myself from people who are easily influenced. More possible. But doesn't that mean that he thinks very little of me? Ah, that's not guaranteed that we'll keep in touch after graduating, graduating either. I can't shake off the feeling of frustration welling up and end up losing sleep at night. I'm so anxious that I decide to discuss it with Henry. She likes food, so I lure her in by inviting her to a cough cafe. He rolled what? Henry steps the cherry tomato on the plate. It makes a popping sound and bursts. Uh, maybe telling her wasn't a good idea after all. So what if he's a cult leader? I want to talk to him again. Oh. Besides, he only helped copyright the texts. It's not like he involved himself in their activity. Uh, your moral compass just did a complete 180 right now. Listen, I'm sure he understands the weight of his actions. His current isolation must be just damage control. Are you sure he's not just a control freak who enjoys having power over others? God, Henri, are we talking about the same person here? He's the most tactful person I know. He will If you commit... And Sayori, because he told you your imaginary world will become real, don't come crying to me. You can't cry if you're dead, Miss Warhol. Ah. Uh, anyway, Cornell dangerous, okay? People like him harm others without even realizing it. How is the question to be? Is this Heaven's Gate literally the Heaven's Gate that happened in real life, but now instead of. A, cr a crazy old guy we have now literally a, a, call, a high school kid? Wait. What's this also happening in episode 3? I don't know. Episode 3 is old in my head. That accident confirmed it. If he's a writer, he should take full responsibility for the messages he's communicating. And don't go, it's her, their own fault on me. But it is. Everyone has their own brains. If they decided to self-destruct after hearing they're in a video game, then they were already predisposed to it. Okay, being being puppets on the string. Okay, understandable. You can just you can just interpret it in in your own way. However, literally saying like like that is like oh hi for full. I thought you were complete. No, you are broken. <clears throat> Yeah. They just saw the cult side and BAM! Confrontation bias activated. They wanted a motive. They got it. I would never end my life just because I stumbled on some creepy past on the internet. Okay, what? Where did that come from? It would take more than that, like mother's death. On my own health deteriorating to the point where I start hurting others, then I... Eh, hey, stop it. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm completely right either. Circumstances are different in each other's individual case. I know that. I'm just worried about him. Knowing Vincent, he'll never talk about himself. 
Which is okay with me, if that's what he wants. But if I keep ignoring this, what if he... What if... I think of running on the field. Children are laughing, illuminated by sun. People like that don't live long. Fine, I get it. Talk to him when you get the chance, okay? I'm sure you two will figure something out. I walk on me home and wave her goodbye. When I see Vincent next time, next time, what should I tell him? No matter what I say, I'll find myself afraid of hearing his answer. Graduation. The graduation for day finally comes. Time sure flies. Charlie, over here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is a good looking dress. Who? Hello, umbrella man. Long time we'll see. Hello, do you really not recognize me? I think you just aged by nine years. <laughs> Ow, okay, okay, seven. Please don't kick me, Miss Earl. I know, I look good. You do too. I look like my father. I wonder why it just came with the fall of Umbrella Man. Hmm, I wonder. And you hate it? I don't know anymore. All that matters is that mother is doing better. Henry pets my head. Oh, Okay, try to have fun today. Thanks, you too. I look for Vincent in the crowd. He's talking to one of his, our teachers, all smiles as usual. I join him, join him as his shadow. Either. You look different. You look tired. <laughs> Do I? Well, I suppose I'm not really fond of long ceremonies. Is Miss Warhol not with you? She's participating in a photo shoot with other girls. I ran away as soon as I saw the camera. Vincent laughs, visibly amused. And it's too stuffy in this suit. I have to agree. But there's nothing much we can do about it, right? Yeah, I just want it to be over soon. By the time we get to the rented conference hall, it's already evening. The banquet wasn't, doesn't interest me, but I already paid for it, so I stuffed myself full with random appetizers. Winston is dissecting a steamed carrot with a precision of a surgeon at the nearby table. Okay. He seems bored. The moment I decide to approach him, he's engaging in a conversation with someone else. Too bad. I decide to look for Henri and find her surrounded by girls on the floor below. She looks like she's having fun, so I leave her to it. The answer to me that out of all the people in class, I only managed to become somewhat friendly with two. The rest, I don't really have anything to talk about. Unless it's homework. Maybe it's for the best if we forget each other's names after we all go separate ways. In the corner of my eye, I see Vincent leaving the hall. Not leaving? Just taking a walk outside. It's a bit noisy in here. Oh, alright. Doesn't look look in <laughs> doesn't look like he's going to come back. See you later then. See you. Gap his coat is still here. When I run out of the building Vincent is nowhere to be seen. I jog a bit to the main road until I spot the familiar silhouette. Huh? Well no, wait, your coat. Ah, thank you. You needn't have to run. I would have come back for later for it later. It didn't seem like it. Vincent covers his mouth with his hand, adding the surfacing emotion. <laughs> he said so. Mind if we if I walk with you for a bit? Sure. We walk in silence. There's too much on on my mind, but I can't put any of it into words. Somehow we ditched the prom night without really planning to. I don't think anybody's going to look for me today anyway. We reached a viewpoint on the hill. It's the highest platform in the old town. Vincent is panting lightly, exhausted from climbing the stairs. It's pretty high up here, isn't it? I'm not fond of high places. It's all too familiar for some reason. I feel sick. I like them though. Even the air feels clear. Vincent leans over the fence and inhales the night air. Being above everything, 
Leaving all the noise and commotions down below. Don't you feel the same? No. I feel like I could fall down any second. Hmm, I see. Oh, are you alright? I got down, my head spinning. I'm not alright. It's like we've been here before. Yet it's not the same. You. You never talk about anything that really matters to you? Always all smiles and big talk. Talking, 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 yet nothing you say has real weight to it. I'm sick of your smiling face. What? Ah, I see. Should I say what you want to hear then? Or agree with everything you say, like you always do? Ah, my personality has nothing to do with this. Does it? I'm led to believe that you're as much of a control freak as I am. No matter how much others worry about you, you decide to shoulder everything on your own. That's because of how my mother is. That's because I don't want to be a burden. But for you, it's all about your image. But if I asked for help, who would have provided it? You? At very least, I'd listen to what you have to say. Just don't trust me enough. You don't trust anyone. Vincent's eyes gleam with eyes. The only one who sees a problem in it is you, Isla. You're not the solution to my problems. Neither am I to yours. Even though you seem to think otherwise. Needless need needles and knives. It's worth Peter's through, but it don't but I don't fatter. Walter <coughs> I know. Yet I want to be uh, Yet I want to understand you. It's not your fault that I don't. You're someone I've always looked up to. You could do things I couldn't and find the right words to influence others. It always felt like your opinion mattered. I crouched on and faced the ground, suddenly flustered. I... I thought I wouldn't mind losing my individuality if it mean getting influenced by yours. Vincent Gaze becomes absent-minded. I'm a bit envious. I have no one like that. There's only myself. Always has, have been. I have no role model and have a hard time finding a reflection of myself in other people. It's like standing on the other side of a one-way mirror. But I don't think of others as inferior to myself. In fact, I like people a lot. That's why I try to show it with appropriate words. Language passwords. Just like we discussed once, remember? Friend, soulmate, partner. These are all very easy to say. The only difference is that while they have a meaning to others, these words sound empty to me. I've never felt close to anyone. The kind, understanding Winston Fennel didn't exist until I created him. I remember Winston in the kindergarten. Emotionally dead. Emotionally dead kid. Getting crowds around him with useless trinkets from popular shows. The only time he ever showed emotion was when he tore off things from those ends. Claiming to be in control. Control? Is that what it's all about? You claim that you don't mean things you say. That your personality is fabricated. I don't think you're being entirely honest. You're right. I don't mind, mean it either. Ah, he's insufferable. You. However, Vincent isn't looking at me. His mind is elsewhere. It's like there's a wall between myself and the rest. Ever since my childhood. I've been trying to break through it by trying to be someone I'm not. Yet, it's meaningless. Even if, even if I make it seem like he exists, I can become him. Deep inside, I must be the same child who laughed at the ends whose wings he tore off. Just because it was the only time when he felt like he was in control of someone's life. Because he lacked control over his own. Still, you've been trying your best, haven't you? All this talk about a quiet place. 
those bruises. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that whoever you live with, they've been a stumble on my words. They haven't been treating you well. The Vincent I remember was an empty husk of a person. It's like you were never physically there at all. Yet with time you were able to regain control over your life. It's not like you became someone whom others look up to overnight. You worked hard for it, because you care. It's just a life narrative you construct for me. It's something that pretty. I can't be proud of being a hypocrite. Would you rather dissociate for the rest of your life? I don't want that either. My choices are wrong. There's just no hope for me, is there? Huh? It's life. I already tried to put an end to it. Oh. A month ago. Huh? I didn't... I didn't think much of it. It was something I knew would happen one day or another. Naturally. Yet I ended up not going all the way. I thought, ah, I still haven't returned the notebook. I was supposed to put an end to everything. For a ridiculous reason like that, I didn't. My eyes began to sting, but no tears came on, come out. I, I may be insignificant and frankly boring, but I'm going to do my best to become someone you can consider your equal. So that, you won't feel so alone. I'll keep doing my best, so, so you, so I, in the corner of my eyes, see Vincent crouching down near me, putting a hand on my shoulder. Don't push yourself, he says, his gaze remaining frozen. You're already done enough. Empty words and template phrases. Neither of us can find comfort in each other's words. Neither of us know what to do. I want you to live, I croak out, not to a corpse. Not to an imaginary construct, not to a vacant shell, but to Vincent Fennell himself. History repeats. I can't see his face. I see, Vincent says simply. No tears, no surprises. That's how Vincent Fennell is. Yet his words sounded almost thankful. Vincent gets up and extends his hand to me. Congratulations. Con Congratulations on graduating, Charles. I reach out and accept it. Accept his hand. The future still remains uncertain. Yet I feel like I'll be able to fall asleep, fall asleep tonight. The sun rises. A new day has come. The end. Editing, testing, okay, okay, mm -hmm. nice. Nice. Thank you for playing. Thank you for making this. Yo, uh, that's the end. <laughs> oh. So, uh, how was the game? I mean, it was mostly... Mm, mm. And uh, yeah, this is the end of the Hello Charlotte series. The end of all. Of uh, Charlotte and everyone in that world. I mean, the, okay, the, I mean, there's... I mean, there's still one thing to consider.